Hi, my name is Mike from Mike's Carburetor Parts. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on rebuilding a Rochester 4 barrel, 4 jet, uh, 4G, 4GC, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be working on this one. This is a little square bore, and uh, this is uh, an older Rochester 4 jet, probably, oh, I say 54, 55 ish, somewhere around there. And uh, you can see the uh, flange is uh, square. I uh, can't remember the uh, measurement here, but anyway, a square where uh, the later uh, 4Gs were more rectangular bottom. But they're basically uh, uh, the rebuild process pretty much the same. So I'm gonna, I'll start out with this first video of uh, putting together the uh, th throttle body. And I, I've taken it apart, I cleaned it, and uh, got everything polished up, all the parts ready, and now I'm going to put it back together. Uh, what I suggest you doing is uh, maybe uh, subscribing to my uh, YouTube uh, video channel, <clears throat> and uh, that way you will be uh, notified as, the, uh, as I add to this uh, carburetor series for the 4G. All right, so anyhow, let's start out with, uh, we're going to put this secondary shaft in here. goes right here. Okay, so we're putting the secondary uh, shaft in. Now hopefully... Uh, You'll take some digital pictures uh, when you, as you take the carburetor part, especially this part. I always do because uh, it's uh, it, it's such a complicated thing. I just I refer to the pictures all the time uh, to make sure I'm getting it right as I go along here. And I was actually trying to see my picture from across the room. At any rate, uh, all right. So we got the secondary shaft in here. We have. Uh, the four butterflies or valves whatever you want to call them and uh, we got two thin ones and two thick ones and the thin ones uh, it's hard to get them uh, mixed up because the thick ones go on the secondary and they got a bigger uh, slot in the shaft so we'll start with that with the thicker ones um, there's a little uh, uh, trademark RP here for Rochester and uh, that generally goes on um, towards the manifold side so it'll show up you'll be able to read it from the bottom of the carburetor and also they generally go towards the inside of the carburetor uh, <clears throat> so that'll help you uh, <clears throat> figure out which way they uh, position let's see that's I believe this goes this way okay Okay, so I got the letters on the inside and uh, facing this way. So, <clears throat> I take something uh, pointed here and to get them lined up. Now the important thing on these things is to get them in there as tight as you can. So around here you don't have any gap. If you have any gap, it's going to be like a vacuum leak or it's going to make the, uh, uh, especially on the primary, what's going to make the... Uh, uh, idle too fast <clears throat> so uh, so a lot of times I'll just kind of bang it back and forth and make sure it sits real good or seats real good I should say uh, you can look through it at the light and make sure there's not uh, too much light going through so I think you get the point now <clears throat> I put uh, uh, always use new screws for this By the way, to take the old ones out, uh, the first thing I do is I take a little Dremel tool and on the um, the uh, end of the uh, screw I grind it down. Uh, a lot of times they'll be uh, kind of beat down by a machine or something so they don't come out. Now if you grind them down then uh, they'll come out a lot easier. I seldom break one. Um, I always put a little Loctite on these screws. Before I put them in, I don't want them to fall out into the engine. That would not be good. 
told a story once where I was early in my career I was working on a four barrel I don't know if it was a quadrajet or what but anyway it was uh, some stupid reason to decide to take the top of the carburetor off while it was still on the car and uh, managed to drop one of those uh, check balls into the engine and I had to pull the uh, intake and the head apart off to uh, get the stupid thing out and that was a costly uh, lesson I yeah, I never did it again. Okay. When you're all done, you can also uh, take a little... Uh, hammer and drift punch and uh, mushroom the back of them a little bit if you want. So as I say, when you tighten these down, hold these closed good so that they're nice and tight. So there we go. So we got the secondary valves in. So now in the primary, um, this one will uh, go up like so as I know it'll come back on the idle screw and uh, these uh, the same thing with the letters they'll go uh, towards the manifold and towards the inside of the carburetor so I have to figure out which way that is when I poke them in okay and uh, these are the thin ones go in the thin slot and also the primary And if you'll notice, uh, they angle in uh, towards, they, they, they more or less meet, I'm not sure how to put this, but they more or less meet the secondaries. They both angle down towards the inside of the carburetor. Okay. Okay, I didn't pull out enough screws for this. All right, here we go. Now you don't always have to take it apart, but you know if you got a classic car and and uh, you really want to do it upright and make sure everything's clean and buffed out um, you'll need to take this apart but not a big deal if you don't unless the carburetor has been sitting around a long time uh, there may be a lot of or I should say some corrosion and it might impede the uh, action of the throttle shafts and you don't want that. You want to work them as free as possible. Now, I never have to bush these things, and uh, it, you just you can check the sideways play to see if there's any. They um, they're generally on the 4Gs. They're, it's all cast iron. They don't just don't really wear. This one's pretty good even after all these years. Just a slight bit in the secondary. Primary is pretty tight. And, uh, I don't bush uh, carburetors just to be bushing them because there's always a chance you're going to ruin the carburetor if you mess up. So with my finger on the other side, I'm holding these uh, valves tight while I uh, I'll look at look at them through with the light to see if there's any. 
gap. You'll see some light, of course, but you just want them tight as you can. If they stay open uh, like that, it'll actually be like you set the idle way up. And you'll never get it to idle. Um, so if you've uh, rebuilt your carburetor and you took the throttle body apart and you just you can't get the idle slow enough, then uh, one thing you can check is make sure those uh, throttle valves are closing. All right, so then uh, we have our uh, fast idle cam. I won't tighten it yet because I'll probably have to loosen it up again. See it goes up here. It goes up here. You can see where the fast idle notches are. So here's your uh, idle screw and uh, that's how it'll work. Okay. So now on this side, we've got a, a spring, and uh, let's see. All right. So let's take this lever, and uh, let's see. It'll go on and close the throttle valves. We'll go on like that. You get it started, and then you put this spring on. Um, hopefully, you can see what's happening here. This way, like a so, and then push it all on. Okay. So this part of the spring will end up right here on the lever. Okay. But before we put that on we have to put this pin on which is going to hold the spring and uh, give it some tension so I'm going to hook this bottom here maybe easier ways of doing it I don't know um, there's a valve okay you turn it like this get lined up here because the pin has to go right in this uh, slot right here okay through the spring okay there's the spring and in the hole the threaded hole <coughs> excuse me okay I'm gonna tighten it down so I don't I don't want to break it now your uh, throttles uh, could easily be a little bit different than this depending on what it's going on. There's Cadillac, Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, all kinds of them and generally the uh, um, throttles are a little different but the, you'll get the general idea from this. Alright so we don't have any tension. The spring has got to come all the way back over here so uh, let's see if I can just use this to get it over here. Okay, there we go. All right. So now it's spring loaded. See there? So this part of the spring goes around the lever like this. It's inside the lever. Um, you got your little peg or post here that uh, goes inside here. And then you can see the loop of the spring is it's going through that for through the loop and into the hole and uh, that's it for that part okay now we'll go on to this part over here let's see that's gonna have a spring too and I'm gonna have to look at my picture